Welcome to another episode of Capital Kitchen. Today, we're making pepperoni pizza pockets. Now these pizza pockets are way better than the ones you could buy at the store, and they're pretty fun to make too. I like to make a batch of these ahead of time and keep a few in the freezer for when I get that pizza craving. I'm gonna walk you through this step by step and show you how you can make these tonight on Capital Kitchen. Now one of the things that's really interesting about pizza is it's God do. <laughs> now, I remember a few episodes back when we did the sliders, someone left a comment in there because I was using bagged cabbage, the uh, pre-shredded coleslaw mix. And they said, you know, don't make it too easy, don't make it cheap. But the truth of it is, is not everybody has the time to do everything from scratch. So today I'm gonna be using pizza crust, pre-made, and pizza dough, pre-made. This is a fresh pizza dough from the store. Not every store is gonna have this, but most do, and every store is gonna have something like this. Now, if you're one of those people that wanna make a pizza dough from scratch, we actually have a Mariano's cooking video that you can watch on the same page, and you can see my nono uh, go through all the steps, and you can see exactly how to make pizza dough from scratch, then you can come back and watch this video. But for everybody else who just wants to know how to make a pizza pocket at home quick and easy, that's what we're gonna do today. There's lots of toppings you can use for the filling for your homemade pizza pockets, but one of my favorites to add is mushrooms. We're gonna chop these up not too big and not too small, knowing that they're gonna shrink down quite a bit once cooked. Next, we're gonna cut up one whole onion. I didn't want these to be too fine as I like the texture they're gonna bring to our pizza sauce. I think two or three cuts down the length of the onion's good, and then turn the onion 90 degrees and start slicing. Set the onions and mushrooms aside in a bowl and start heating up your pan over medium heat. For our protein today, I can't think of a more iconic pizza topping than pepperoni. We're gonna be using capital pepperoni, and we only need about a quarter of it to make enough filling for eight to 10 pizza pockets. It's salty, peppery, and just one of these bad boys is enough to satisfy your pizza cravings for at least a month. Peel the paper casing and cut the pepperoni in half. Make five or six slices along the length of the pepperoni, turn it 90 degrees, and slice again to get these beautiful pepperoni strips. So we got a dry pan over medium heat, and we're just gonna go in with our pepperoni. So now that we got a little bit of color on our pepperoni here, and it's, it's starting to smell nice, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil and we're gonna use this to cook our uh, onions and our mushrooms right into the meat here. So the idea behind this pizza pocket is instead of doing all the ingredients separately, we're gonna kind of make like an all-in-one filling. So it's gonna have our onions, our mushrooms, our pepperoni, our sauce, uh, everything's gonna be all together for this. And then we're just gonna use it to fill our pizza pockets. While the veggies are cooking, smash two or three garlic cloves and give them a quick chop. Okay, so now that we got our chopped garlic, and you can see we've got our nice sauteed uh, onions, mushrooms, and pepperoni here, we're just gonna throw a little bit of garlic in. Could you imagine if that was all I was gonna throw in, just that little bit there? And we're just gonna let this go until we start to smell the garlic. It shouldn't take long, just, just 30 seconds to a minute. We're gonna go in with some passata. This is strained tomato. You can get a few different varieties. Some come with basil, some don't. Okay, now while this is going, this is the thing that's really gonna make it taste like pizza sauce. So you wanna drop some oregano in there. We're gonna drop in some Italian seasoning and a pinch of red chili flakes. This is optional. This is just if you like a little bit of heat. Now normally, if you were making a sauce, this is way too thick. If you're making a pasta sauce or a tomato sauce, it's gonna be way too thick. But a pizza pocket, if you've never had one, it's got a pretty thick sauce in there. But I don't wanna reduce this too much, so I'm, I got the heat as low as it goes at this point. Peel and pop. Now, could someone please comment with the secret to opening these cans? What? I almost broke my thumb doing this, and it's definitely not safe to be sticking a knife into a pressurized container. Seriously, don't do this. There we go. Now, I wanted to show these two kinds of dough because some people might prefer one or the other, or they may not be able to find fresh dough where they are. The process for preparing these is the same on both. You want to start by stretching out the dough with your hands before rolling them out on a baking sheet. If your dough seems really sticky, then you might want to dust your baking sheet or rolling pin with some flour first. Get some olive oil in the pan and sort of mop it up and spread it around with one side of the dough. This is going to prevent it from sticking while cooking and also allow the outside of our dough to turn a nice golden brown color as it cooks. Fill the pockets with a few spoonfuls of filling and top with some cheese. I used fresh mozzarella and just broke it up with my hands. Fold the dough over and pinch and press the outside to form a nice seal around the edges. It doesn't have to look perfect because the dough will rise and puff up into a beautiful looking shape in the oven. Sprinkle some Italian seasoning on top 
and cut a few holes into the top side of the dough before putting it down into an oven set as hot as yours goes. In my case, that was 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, while those are in there, uh, I've been seeing a lot of this trending hot honey thing on pizza crust. From my understanding, it's just hot stuff and honey. I'm just gonna put in some hot sauce. In the proportions, you can do whatever you want, but I, I think we want mostly honey. What a time to be alive, hey? I'm gonna add some crushed red chili flakes. It's gonna be a nice, spicy, sweet, sticky glaze. Can't be bad. Okay, so it hasn't been very long. It's been maybe like eight minutes or so, eight to 10 minutes. And uh, now we're gonna take these out. It's hot in here. Look at those. Woo! This one puffed up like huge. This one didn't seal all that crazy. See, that's the canned one, where the pizza dough came out more like a calzone. I'm gonna put a little bit down. It's like a drizzle. So we got hot honey with canned pizza dough, pizza crust. We got fresh pizza crust, calzone style. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> we'll see what we're looking like on the inside. Perfect. This one, you can just tell from looking at it, it's sealed up really well. I can't wait to take a bite out of this one. Now let's take a peek at our hot honey one. This is the one where we used our uh, canned pizza dough. Beautiful again, just beautiful filling on the inside. Cheers. That is better than any pizza pocket, pizza pop, anything like that I've ever had. Like this is definitely worth making. The fresh pizza dough was very, very easy to work with. The texture is amazing. It cooked super easy. I don't think you could beat that. We'll see. So Nick had a big lunch. He wanted to get behind the camera. So this is just me. I'm, I'm gonna try the hot honey one now. You can actually see from looking at it, it's not quite as fluffy. It's a little bit of a denser dough. It's closer to bread, I would say. All right, I got mixed feelings. It's a very nice touch. It tastes very, very good, but my hands are sticky because it's covered in honey. So it's maybe not super practical, but it's very, very good. The, the texture of the dough as well, almost equally good. Almost equally good. I think I prefer the fresh pizza dough, uh, but this definitely works in a pinch. I can't believe, like we could just make this, you know? It's the future. Please make this, honestly, it's so easy. This tastes way better than anything you're gonna get from the freezer aisle. It's not even close, no comparison. Very simple to make, doesn't take long at all. And with that, we'll see you next time. So thanks for watching. Outro, outro, outro time. These outros are getting out of hand, Nick. <laughs>